me and uh, I mean, of course, uh, along with Yusuf and uh, we'll be um, making this uh, time that you have invested worthwhile. OK, so let's start the uh, webinar by first uh, introducing Yusuf. Um, so Yusuf has uh, is a co-founder and trainer of SourcePro, also is a managing director of key resourcing. Now, uh, uh, you know, uh, we would just like, you know, to understand from Yusuf first, you know, how his uh, career journey has been uh, so that, uh, you know, uh, you guys can uh, build the context from um, uh, why this expert has come to tell you, uh, you know, why we do resumes or the future of recruitment is so important. Um, so, yeah, over to you, Yusuf. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Alok. Thank you for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity. You know, uh, to start with, I mean, I, I started my um, career back in 1998 and, and basically started working as a recruiter. Now, it's been almost uh, 22 years now that I've been into this uh, recruitment industry. And um, uh, mostly, I mean, I, I, I've, uh, throughout my entire career, I've been working in recruitment. Now, uh, to be honest, I came into this profession by accident. I mean, I, I actually did not plan to get into recruitment. And that's how uh, most of the recruiters, they actually, so there are, there are two types of recruiters you would find. One is people who come uh, as an accident. I mean, they want to just get into something and then they land up uh, doing recruitment and then they start loving it. And then there are other set of people who kind of they've done their MBA HR and they, they, they think that getting into recruitment will get uh, get them uh, into a HR generalist profile. So, so these are the kind of people we, we normally find. So I, I come here by an accident and then trust me, it has been a very wonderful journey and uh, uh, you can actually make out uh, a career out of uh, recruitment too. A lot of people think that recruitment is where, I mean, people don't have careers, but um, uh, people do have careers. And uh, yeah, it's been 22 years and I've been uh, uh, successful in doing uh, whatever I do in, in terms of recruitment. Yeah, uh, look, I, we lost your voice. Yeah. Sorry, uh, is it better now? Yeah. It's so uh, what is your uh, success to secret? I mean, if I may understand, um, you know, uh, because see, I mean, funny you mentioned that because everyone has their own story. I got into recruitments because I was rejected in 17 interviews first. So <laughs> I thought, <laughs> you know, now I'm going to become a recruiter in my life. <laughs> right. But but I think, yes, everyone has their own stories and yours is, yes. uh, uh, and every, everything is amazing. But uh, you know what yes. is what is that uh, uh, you know uh, one thing that you feel is very important to be uh, successful in your career, of course, and you know how you have managed to you know strike that chord because uh, mm -hmm. I think you know training over fifteen thousand recruiters mm -hmm. today and conducting you know uh, and that globally I'm talking about right yeah. uh, so uh, and then you know conducting over fifteen hundred workshops is is an achievement. I mean you know I don't think so. I have uh, met a headhunter or recruiter who was, you know, as uh, good as you, to be honest. Thank you. Well, uh, see, one of the mantras is always keep learning. That's that's what I keep doing. I, I still keep learning. I, I enroll for courses online. I, I do a lot of uh, study myself. Um, I go to YouTube. I, I learn a lot of things. I think uh, the, the success mantra is to keep learning, keep yourself up, updated. So if you look at uh, when, when I started, uh, it was 1998. That was a time where uh, you had uh, uh, newspaper ads and you had scanned copy of resumes and uh, you you used to get resumes in in uh, in a paper format and and it was difficult. I mean that time I mean Naukri also was not that uh, uh, I mean people used to not use Naukri also that to uh, that extent. So it was all through pamphlets, head hunting, and then so I've I've come through a long way from there and then I've seen things changing over a period of time and now also i mean things keep evolving and and the only way you can uh, be successful is to to adapt to this change and learn new things and keep yourself uh, updated and that that's how you would actually survive and be successful sure sure all right so uh, like you know uh, let's jump straight to the topic okay mm -hmm. uh, and and start with you know what is uh, so you know l let's answer the basic questions first right so uh, mm -hmm. so that we can develop on that structure wise 
Sure. Uh, what is what is what is that uh, uh, you know a key things uh, I would say that uh, a recruiter looks for in a candidate when he's shortlisting a profile? Let's just okay. you know uh, come to that. Okay. See, um, so uh, I train a lot of recruiters on how to uh, find people. So and then so I know uh, what are the kind of uh, things people would look at in the resumes of candidates because I train them on on how to look for those things. One of the most important thing uh, which you should uh, have on your resume is the keywords. Okay. Now, uh, because if you look at internet, internet is all about keywords. Okay. So you so when when the recruiters are searching for candidates the the they search with the help of keywords so if you're a data scientist if you're a software engineer if you're a if you're a python developer or if you are a sales or if you are any person so all these keywords do matter so keywords is very important aspect in uh, in terms of uh, uh, getting your cv shortlisted when people are searching for you okay now if you don't have the right keywords I, i've seen a lot of time candidates making this mistake i mean they write their resumes in a fancy language uh, things like uh, people put things like your uh, motivation motivated and all those things but trust me recruiters actually don't use fancy languages while they're actually searching for people they would actually look at what kind of projects you've worked on what kind of companies you've worked with what is the years of experience you have what is this the skill sets you you have right so that and all this in are are searched in the form of keywords so if you you need to have the right keywords on your resumes the second thing which um, i think um, uh, normally a p uh, resume a recruiter would look uh, at a resume is the is the pedigree of of the candidate as to what kind of schools the candidate is coming from or let's say if it's not a tier 1 or a tier 2 or a tier 3 kind of a college if they're not from those colleges then what kind of projects the person has actually uh, worked on Okay, so what is that P degree? What kind of um, so there are a lot of um, um, online contests which happens, hackathons which happen. So so has the candidate actually done all those things? So so all those things also matter a lot on your resume. So these are uh, two things which people look at. The third thing is uh, uh, resume uh, candidate. Uh, the the recruiters would look at uh, basically the numbers or the facts on your resumes so what are your achievements what are your accomplishments if you've worked on certain processes or projects what impact have you made on those processes and projects so so that also gives a very uh, 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 an idea to the recruiter as to what kind of profile you are what what is how is your attitude how, professionally how you are so looking at the kind of deliveries you have then if you have won any awards or anything whether it's uh, uh, during your employment or whether it's during your college days or or what kind of uh, extracurricular activities you've been involved in so a lot of things so these are the things which people actually look at okay um, and uh, and especially another thing, I mean, a lot of people uh, wouldn't agree, but a lot of people also look at your hobbies. Okay, and the hobbies describe your personality as to what kind of person you are. Are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? Or uh, what do you like? Okay, would you actually, uh, based on your hobbies, would you be culturally fit for that particular organization or no? So, so these are the things which normally a recruiter would definitely look at your uh, resume, and based on these things, uh, the resume will get either shortlisted or rejected. Wonderful, right? So this is the traditional way of you know how the hiring used to work and is working also predominantly in, in many sectors so far. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would say that you know uh, what are the recruiters' uh, challenges in this? Uh, you know, so. When you mentioned like a couple of things like, you know, whether the candidate has participated in a hackathon mm -hmm. or uh, whether a person is culturally fit for the organization, um, uh, you know, and, and a resume can barely say, uh, right, because on the basis of resumes, it's very difficult for a recruiter to judge a person, whether he's a cultural fit or no. Of course, you know, his yes. experience, where he comes from, it matters a lot. Uh, yeah. on the institute that he represents, you know, it's it, everything tells a little about the culture, right? right? 
yeah. about the person. But but you know, uh, uh, unless of course you know. So basically, uh, the question is, mm-hmm. how do uh, uh, what are the current challenges of the recruiters? You know, when mm-hmm. they are actually uh, shortlisting the candidates. Right. See, um, so uh, if you look at the resume, it's it's just a piece of paper with all the details about the candidate, right? So so based on whatever the candidates have written on the profile and based on those keywords, basically, the the CVs get selected. But there is no chance for a candidate to actually sell uh, his profile to to any employer okay that is what the major challenge is and you cannot write everything uh, about yourself in a in a resume or you cannot express that in in your resume so that is one of the biggest challenges what i see uh, during this entire hiring process so there could be a lot of things which a candidate might have done or want to say to the to the employers but just because i mean uh, he cannot do that in that resume and because uh, and if he still does it there is still a pro- possibility his uh, cv or his or her cv will not get uh, selected is because the recruiters are doing a, a keyword search right mm-hmm. so so that's that's one of the biggest challenges i feel right and i guess you know uh, this is where uh, uh, you know it's not that uh, you know so then uh, we talk about video resumes now right mm-hmm. or maybe you know uh, let's go a step backwards mm-hmm. since you know the ai has uh, has uh, intervened you know in our lives it is not it's been there for a while mm-hmm. it's just that now it's you know uh, uh, basically data science so when you say data science Right. It's basically applied to everywhere and in, in every segment of our lives, right? Right. So uh, now uh, the bots have been there, you know, uh, are there rather? You know, a funny thing you mentioned because you know uh, uh, last year I remember we did an interview of four hundred candidates mm-hmm. in a matter of two hours, you right. know, and just all through bot, you know, uh, yeah. and it was just a, a simple test that were given, uh, a behavioral test, technical test, everything, and uh, all we know is in two hours, you know, we have uh, we have interviewed four hundred candidates. Right. You know? so, yeah. Uh, so you know how has AI now impacted this particular industry? That's another question. Um, and then the second phase of the question is, uh, you know, what what should the candidates do? Right. Mm-hmm. So there are two phases. First is how AI has impacted the uh, recruitment industry, mm-hmm. and what are the, ex- the expectations from the candidates as well? Okay. And so, uh, see, AI has definitely impacted. Now, now, if you look at uh, uh, every uh, process of recruitment, right, from your sourcing, screening, your onboarding, your offer management, and everything, everything, I mean, uh, AI can be implemented in the entire process, right? So, right from... Uh, uh, so uh, the, I, I've seen AIs where you put a job description and which would actually run in your database will uh, screen, let's say, 1,000, 2,000 CVs now, and based on the keywords or based on your projects and all, it will shortlist, let's say, 100, 200 CVs. So instead of a recruiter actually going through those 2,000, 3,000 CVs, they're only looking at those 100, 200 select, uh, selected CVs by the bot or by the AI tool. Right now, if you look at the communication part, so let's say these 100, 200 CVs have got shortlisted, then there are bots which would uh, actually start uh, talking to these candidates saying that, are you interested and uh, 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 would you like to come for an interview? Then the interviews are scheduled again through bots. So a lot of, lot of things have, have actually changed. Okay. Now in this entire, and, and which is a good thing. I mean, and, and this is the future. I mean, this is how things would be in, in the future. So not only in recruitment, but if you look at any other industry, any other domain, these are the things which will definitely get uh, get um, impacted. Now here, the 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 candidates need to understand how this entire process works, and based on that, so based on uh, so like I mentioned in my previous answer, that what are the things a recruiter actually looks at? So so they will have to start writing their CVs in that way. When when they respond back to the the chatbot, so they have to understand that how do they respond back to the chatbots because there is a human touch missing here, right? So so it's like uh, you 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 asking Alexa to do something and then Alexa doesn't understand it, so it doesn't give you 
the right answers right so some sometimes it happens with alex also so so this would also happen here so these are some of the challenges which are which are there but the candidates should, should understand this and based on that they should actually improve the way how they are actually communicating with the employers with their potential employers with their with the recruiters or with the hrs or with the hiring managers uh, within these organizations makes sense Yes. So, so what are so again? You know, then uh, the candidates. And what are the tools they can use actually to you know uh, brand themselves? Okay, so um, this is from the candidate side. Huh? The candidate side, yes. Yeah. So basically, uh, see, um, uh, as a candidate, first thing what they should do is they should actually list down all the job portals which are available in the market. Okay, yeah. so you never know uh, which recruiter is going to search on which job portal. So exactly. the more profiles they have on the internet, it becomes very easier for the recruiter to get in touch with them. And for the candidates, it's it's a good thing. I mean, all these uh, different job portals are mostly free for uh, for the candidates, right? Yeah. So I would first thing is I would uh, ask every candidate to make a profile on all the job portals which are available. Okay. Try looking for local job portals also. Try looking for uh, uh, tools like, uh, um, uh, for example, if you look at uh, uh, OLX and those kind of things also, you'll find a lot of job postings happening there. Okay, So try and put your profiles on all these different sites so that you become searchable by the recruiters. Second is social media. Okay, Now, social media, uh, you need to have profiles on all different social media sites. Yeah, so whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, wherever, again, it becomes very easier for them to uh, search. And when you're creating these profiles on, on all these uh, different sites, there has to be a link between your resumes on your job portals and your uh, profiles on these different social media sites, right? So it's become it becomes very easier for the recruiters to get in touch with you, to communicate with you, or to find you, right? And then... <clears throat> And then you should also look at, so so for example, if you're software engineers or if you're developers or if you're data scientists, okay? So you should look at what are the forums or what are the associations where uh, normally these kind of people hang out. So for example, software engineers, you would find mostly software engineers hanging out on GitHub, Stack Overflow. And trust me, a lot of recruiters actually go to GitHub and Stack Overflow and search for people there. If you're a data scientist, you go to Kaggle, create your profile on Kaggle, right? Or find some forums which are there, okay? And and be active on all these uh, social media. It's not just creating a profile, but it is it is being active also. Try and put your projects on these sites. Try and uh, talk to people because they're so. If not recruiters, there would be other set of people who might have uh, uh, might have. Uh, uh, vacancies in their teams so they might the hiring managers can directly contact you instead of recruiters also so it's make it's it's about making a presence where anyone can search you and then they can actually hire you so they should have profiles all over the internet wonderful wonderful thank you so much Yusuf. that was a great answer so yeah no, okay so now coming to the main topic of the discussion so where do you think video resumes uh will fit into this and do you first feel that it is important uh yes i i definitely feel i mean video resumes are important and and it's going to be um a, a big uh, next thing uh in in the future in the coming days uh the reason being uh like i mentioned i mean i i have seen a complete uh evolution around uh, recruitment so right from your pager days to your uh, print resumes to your nowcre to your linkedin to your facebook twitter github and and, and i've seen that change uh, happening uh, over a period of time now that time uh, and then uh, when 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 there were newspapers people had problems with naukri okay so why why should i have my uh, cv on naukri but now if you look at naukri naukri has the largest database in india right and and most of the people are getting jobs through naukri.com right so there would be certain hiccups there would be certain uh, resistance from people but uh, trust me it is going to be the next big thing uh, now uh, the main reason why it is going to be the next big thing is 
like I mentioned earlier, I mean, your res- resumes do not make an impact on your employers. Okay. Now, your video resumes would be the first thing which which will help you make an impact on your employers. You can actually sell your profile to the employers. You can actually talk about your achievements. You can talk about your uh, professional uh, things. You can talk about uh, your education. You can talk about everything in your resumes. Um, when it comes to written, it becomes a little difficult to put down everything. But but when you talk about it, um, it, it shows uh, your communication skills. It shows your professionalism. It, it shows your confidence. And, and trust me, video resumes would be uh, a very important to make that first good impression on the employers. Okay. So that's why video resumes will definitely make a difference. Sure. So, so what are the key factors that a person needs to uh, keep in mind, you know, when um, mm-hmm. they are um, uh, designing a video resume? Uh, mm-hmm. Of course, you know, uh, the length is important to start yeah. with because it cannot be more than three minutes, four minutes, right? Because again, yeah. the recruiters will start yawning. So, yes, uh, so, uh, so, you know, so, so like length is there then, you know, so what according to you uh, should be the ideal length to grasp the attention and the content mm-hmm. of video resume according sure. to you. Sure. So, uh, see, the first and important thing is uh, basically uh, the the kind of environment you're going to create the video. Okay. So, what kind of camera you're going to use? Okay. Um, so, if it's if it's a smartphone, then the resolution and everything should be good. It should be very clear. The background and and uh, no noise and all those things. So, so that that uh, people need to actually make sure that it's a it's a closed room. There is no noise. It's a professional background. The kind of dressing a person should have a formal dressing. Okay. So this is the first thing which I uh, which I would uh, definitely mention that um, you should uh, have uh, while creating the. Re- uh, video resume now second thing is like you mentioned it should be a not uh, more than a three minutes video okay because now if you look at uh, TED talks okay now TED talks also these are not like um, 40 minutes or one hour uh, kind of uh, sessions these are very short and simple uh, sessions on TED talks the reason being because a person's attention uh, to any particular video or anything is very, very small. Okay, after a certain time, the person doesn't uh, is not interested in looking at those videos, right? So yeah, it should be very small, and I think it should not be more than three minutes uh, video. Okay, now. When I say three minutes video, then uh, a lot of people then start uh, asking me as to within three minutes, what should we actually uh, sell? Because uh, normally uh, people think if it's a video resume, they should actually talk about everything in the resume. But I would say you do not need to talk about everything in the resume. What you need to uh, do is you should treat your resume as an elevator pitch to talk to your employers okay so treat it as an elevator pitch saying what are your major achievements in your entire professional career what have you achieved what are the projects you've worked on and and more imp- the most important part is why should the company actually hire you that is the most important part which should be uh, conveyed in that video message okay yeah? and that is what is missing in the in the paper resumes okay or in the in in your word documents that is what is missing because you cannot tell the company as to why uh, p- uh, why people should hire you now if you look at uh, uh, the paper resumes a lot of times people write objective Okay, yeah. and that objective is supposed to be writing an elevator pitch where people should hire you. But trust me, that objective no recruiter or no hiring manager actually looks at. So, so instead of writing those objectives and everything, you should actually create an elevator pitch within that video resume. Now, and it should not be a very monotonous video where a person is just talking. I think uh, people should add some slides, some photos, some photos of the certifications or something like that. People should make the video more interesting. Yeah. So instead of just a person talking, it should also have some images, some graphics, something which would actually attract the employers. And all these graphics and uh, uh, photos and slides uh, should have uh, 
uh, things uh, like their achievements, their projects, and 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 all those things, and and more importantly, why they should hire the person. Okay. So this is what I think uh, should be there in the in the video resume. Wonderful, right? So okay, now coming uh, that just came to my mind, sir. Is mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, in yeah. the in the corporate industry but uh, come, hello, can you hear me? uh yeah i had lost you in between okay can you hear me now yeah i can hear you now yeah okay cool so uh you know uh, uh let me rephrase the question uh so video resumes are very popular in us and european countries right and yeah. in some part and some segments in indian industry like entertainment and you know everything there still the video resume works of mm -hmm. course, you know, for the higher level management, video resumes are still very popular in India as well. You know, come to think yes. of it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but but you know, so the, now why you know uh, from whatever recruitment community that we uh, both belong to, you know, or what recruiters think, the talk of the yeah. town, right? Yeah. Is that uh, uh, you know recruiters are still not ready for video resume, so per se. Now, obviously, thankfully, the things have uh, started changing because mm -hmm. the kind of time that is invested in screening uh, ten resumes. I think you know now you know since last one year I have taken started taking video interviews and video resumes. A lot of video resumes have you know come in. So yeah. uh, coming to the question part of it, right? Uh, you know when do you think now that the trend uh, has uh, shifted? Okay, now and how much time it will take? Uh, you know for uh, uh, most of our community to accept video resumes as new norm or you know the new. Thank you. Yeah. See, I think it's been almost a couple of years now that this uh, uh, video resume trend has started. But uh, you can see a slight, uh, uh, I would say, it's gone on a fast track since this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Because now everything is online. Uh, and and uh, uh, now people are looking at more creative ways in to get in touch with the employers or their uh, potential employers so so uh, i've seen a, a, a very upward curve in terms of uh, the video resumes coming in uh, to the recruiters and and especially during this covid 19 times so yes i mean now this has kind of become a trend uh, i think because of this situation or uh, but then it this train was there earlier also but it is just went upwards only and i think within a year's time a lot of things would change and and mostly people would uh, ask for video resumes rather than your normal paper format resumes sure sure yeah. sure okay guys uh, just uh, so that this question is uh, or this request rather not a question uh, if you guys have any questions for uh, yusuf or uh, uh, me, you guys can just post it here. Uh, you know, uh, we have ample of time uh, where we can address your questions as well. All right, so we have one question from Darshana. Uh, Yusuf, can you mention a few tools that could be used for creating video resumes? Okay. Uh, so, Darshana, uh, there are a lot of tools. So, one of the tools uh, which I suggest is uh, Loom, uh, which is L O, -O M. So I'll just put it in the chat. So here, basically, uh, it's, a, it's a video capturing tool. And then uh, you could basically add your graphics and images and everything. And then it's not a, uh, it's a free tool. So you could basically use this tool to create your resumes. Yeah. Uh, let's Shweta says, please share one sample resume pattern. Uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, to be honest, I don't have a resume pattern at the moment with me. But uh, if you could drop me your email address, maybe Alok and I can send it across to you after the session. Sure. Um, okay, we have one more. Uh, okay, so is Loom free? Uh, yes. For your basic uh, video editing and all, it's it's free. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, just like to add one more thing, guys. Uh, uh, okay, I'll just make a note of that with Shweta, right? One. Yeah, Shweta. Sure. Shweta, we'll just uh, share uh, sample video links with you uh, of video resumes that you can create. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, obviously, you know, we will share uh, guidelines to all the participants as well post this call. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be from Super Pro. So uh, you guys need to understand that uh, uh, even Yusuf Super Pro is also into video yeah. resumes. Yes. Okay? Uh, we do provide free. It's absolutely free for life. You know. Mm-hmm. So uh, of course, you know uh, that's more of an introduction uh, of uh, about yourself, and you know uh, there are a lot more other tools with Super Pro. Just uh, not video resumes. Uh, apart from that, uh, uh, Yusuf, any other thing? Because I think Nokri is also providing, but that's a chargeable facility. Chargeable, right? yeah. It's a chargeable. Okay. Thing, yeah. All right, cool. So uh, I have one more question. Um, just one sec. So uh, what are the soft skills? Uh, you know, um, uh, how to highlight the uh, uh, soft soft skills basically that is essential during the pandemic is the question from Vijay. Okay. So see, I mean, uh, when when you say soft skills, normally people would look at uh, your uh, attitude or your uh, basically your basic communication skills on on how do you present yourself during uh, any interview or something so if if we're talking about video resumes how well are you uh, basically uh, selling your profile to the employers so how polished are you uh, um, in 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 talking about yourself or your introduction or about your projects and all so i think that is one thing which you should make sure that and then based on that your your soft skills are basically uh, judged by the recruiters yeah sure sure and uh, so there is uh, one question uh, from archana so what are the tips for freshers while preparing the video resumes you so okay <laughs> so uh, the tips like i mentioned earlier i mean it should be very short uh should talk about the projects they have done uh during the college time uh they should more focus on that then uh they should also uh focus more on the achievements they have had uh during their uh, college uh, days so they should focus more on that and then uh they should focus on why the employer should hire them because they don't have the experience so what are those things which will uh help uh uh i mean which will help the company uh, basically in terms of uh, if they're culturally fit for the company if they're technically good for the company and and all those things so they should highlight all those things in their video resumes sure yeah. sure makes sense uh, um okay i think there is one from amit is it okay to put video resume on linkedin uh yes amit it is okay to put your video resume on linkedin so in the summary section you get an option where you can upload uh, a file on your profile and uh, it's it's a good option so use that uh, not only on linkedin try and put your resumes on youtube you know, try and put your resumes on vimeo or or any uh, any channel uh, which allows you to upload videos so try and put it everywhere so that uh, you get more traction on your uh, on your video resumes right one in addition to that uh, yusuf uh, yeah. uh, you know uh, there is one more uh, uh, pro tool that we are using super pro right so uh-huh. in here you don't have to upload a file uh, uh-huh. just like how bitly you know you just create a right. link right right so uh, you know once these guys create the video resume there will be a link uh-huh. uh, that they can post it and that's very easy for uh, to communicate as well right that can the same can be added in their resumes as well and also on the linkedin profiles just for i'll share yeah um okay i have one more from archana so yusuf can you share your thoughts for cxo level on vr okay so see if you if you're talking about uh, cxo level uh, video resumes now that that's going to be a completely uh, a different uh, level of a uh, uh, resume so it's not going to talk about the skill sets it's not going to talk about achievements and all but it's going to talk about the major uh, uh, process changes or or for that matter the balance sheets and profit and loss and and uh, mergers and acquisitions so so there are a lot of things which uh, which would change so at the end of the day uh, the 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 format of the video resume will be the same but the accomplishments or or the the projects or or what kind of uh, uh, numbers or figures that would change when when they talk about it so it should be more on the the cxo level of um, 
the CXO level talks basically. So talk about um, your revenue figures, talk about your sales figures, talk about your project figures, talk about cost cutting, talk about all those those, those different factors, and then that would actually help the the companies to understand what kind of uh, changes that person had made in the processes or what are uh, what has been the the growth of that person uh, since that person started working so so that can be included in the uh, cxo level video resumes yeah. thank you sir okay i've uh, got one of my friends jyoti she has answered <laughs> asked this question sorry so will AI replace HR for all the levels? Uh, well, uh, Jyoti, to be honest with you, uh, I don't think uh, uh, AI will actually replace HR. Okay. Yes, but there there would be, see, uh, whether it's AI or, or any any tool, there has to be a little bit of a human touch also, which is necessary. So, so there would, so might be the way how HR functions might change because of AR, but uh, it will not actually replace entire HR because HR is mostly, I mean, it, it's about the human touch, right? And uh, AI cannot replace that human touch. So yes, it will not replace, but uh, yeah, to some extent, processes will change, things will change a little bit because of AI, but it will not replace. I think most of the AI tools, just to uh, in extension to that, Yusuf, most of yeah. the AI tools have been already in place uh, and all the HR fraternity also knows that how now the things have been automated through yeah. AI. Yeah. Uh, so just to answer more precisely of uh, Jyoti's question, I think uh, most of the entry level positions uh, will all will be replaced, I think, by so like, you know, the, the resume sourcing, uh, the mm. screening, shortlisting also, you know, mm. the initial ways, I think it will uh, just be replaced by uh, bots. It al already has, in fact, to yes. be honest. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, all the end, uh, but more deeper functions can never be replaced uh, by AI where human touch is required. Hope yeah. that answers your question, Jyoti. Yeah. Okay. So there is one question for you, uh, Alok. So how can Super Pro help me distribute my video resume? Well, uh, so it's pretty simple, actually. Once you create a Super Pro video resume, you know, what happens is it just gives you a link, OK? Now that link, you, it's very difficult for you to, you know, upload your video file on every platform and not sure whether all the platforms allow you that feature also, right? Come to think of it. But it's very easy to share a link, right? And even in your resumes as well, you know, you can just add a super pro link where uh, a recruiter can just click on that link, just like how he clicks your LinkedIn profile. And you know, you can actually it just it's a so super pro is basically uh, uh, it gives you an access to a landing page. You know, once the link is clicked, you know, it, it it opens a landing page where your video profile is there and the services that you have highlighted it mentioned uh, there. Um, you know, so when I say services, I mean your skills. Uh, it could be your keywords uh, that you should mention in the first uh, earliest uh, stage of the call. And uh, 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 it's very easy for you to share it on every social platform uh, or uh, it's very easy, uh, you know, uh, to actually uh, connect uh, with people or even on WhatsApp groups or uh, every social media channel, I think. So that's how I think it spreads. It's easier to share, easier to connect. So links, of course, are the a uh, new future, a uh, new future, right? Uh, of how we share things across. Yeah. Uh, any more questions, guys? So I have one question, Yusuf, for you. Yeah. Uh, what is that one most important thing, okay, that uh, 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 that a video resume uh, does? Um, see, the most important thing what a video resume does is it it gives that uh, first impression of of the candidate. So basically, it it gives you an opportunity to talk to. Uh, your hiring manager or you talk to your uh, recruiter and that's the first impression you can actually make okay now this this doesn't talk about your skill sets or it doesn't talk about uh, your uh, 
the entire journey or or it doesn't talk about your experience and all but what it talks about is about you so so basically uh, what what are you and and what are what have been your achievements and what have been so a, a recruiter or a hiring manager can make a very good first impression out of this uh, video resume so that is i think the most important part of a video resume and for recruiters uh, uh, what do you think for recruiters uh, for our recruiter friends who have joined this call yeah so for the recruiters i think again it will make their life very easier in terms of uh, screening or uh, uh, the candidates and and based on what they see in the interviews they they can easily accept or reject a candidate based on 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 what the impression is so yes it it is going to make a huge difference for sure and it will become very easier for the recruiters to gauge the confidence level the 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 fitness of the person within the company so there's so a lot of factors which they can actually look at by this 3 minutes video wonderful wonderful and then you know uh, because uh, we are in this industry for such a long time you so yeah. i'm sure you would agree like you know uh, 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 for candidates and hr friends both right yeah. culture plays such an important role yeah right uh so we talk at least it's it's available in every meetings that we take or uh, you know uh, senior level meetings that we take how is culture impacting and culture is 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 where i think people carry culture right i mean yes. uh, every man is known by the company they keep right and vice yeah. versa is also true right yes. uh, every company is also known by the men they keep and and their men define the culture so right. so you know we are i mean because you are also a director of the company what what are the qualities that you look for you know uh, when you are a certain uh, you know let's say defining uh, uh, or hiring uh, when you are making a hiring decision in a person right culturally. right so so basically see uh, to be honest for, for me i i basically don't look at the skill sets uh, as such what i look at uh, uh, in a person is if the person is trainable okay so might be he uh, i'm looking for let's say four skill sets and the person might have two or three skill sets and if the person is trainable i can actually um, train him on on one or two more skill sets so that's what i i normally look at so trainable is the first thing which i actually look at second thing is i look at uh, the attitude of the person so trainable is one thing but is he willing to get trained yeah that is another thing so if if the person is willing to learn then i would definitely uh, definitely hire that person in my team okay because because those those are the people who who try and make a difference within your team so learning is the most important aspect which i look at second is i i look at um, the the kind of environment we have uh versus the kind of person the the person is based on the interview so so looking at his attitude uh, looking at uh, uh his uh, i would actually judge if he would be culturally fit with 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 my team or no and then yeah and then there are a lot of factors to it so so i would actually look at these two things as the most important things so culturally fit and if the if the person is trainable or no okay now the most important part of this question because it's the second phase to it uh, right. you know how can uh, candidates okay uh, demonstrate that they are uh, uh, fit in terms of uh, the culture of the organization because uh, simply speaking when you are uh, creating a video resume right? right it gives you a peep in a person's personality right number 1 right yes. and number 2 uh, uh, you know without he or she saying so much about himself right, right. Uh, uh, you know uh, there is a certain uh, level of cultural assessment that a recruiter is already doing in his mind when he's right. so yeah. what are these uh, factors students or candidates or the freshers experience anyone should right. keep when they are actually you know uh, creating their video resume right so so basically um one of the things what uh, normally people uh, would look at is how do you convey a message to the to the to the person right so when we talking about video resumes uh, people will definitely look at how have you conveyed that message to your uh, to the recruiter or to the hiring manager now there are a lot of different ways of how people would actually convey the message that the tone of the message and how they speak 
okay so, now that actually dip, that actually uh, depicts a lot of thing your tone and your uh, and the way you talk that depicts a lot of things so if you if you have a proper professional tone or or the way you speak okay then it gives a very positive uh, thing now if it's very monotonous and if you're talking in one straight line and and then you don't have a smile on your face or if you if you are not uh, uh, what do you say if you're not presenting it well if you don't have this uh, uh, proper language your body language is not good uh, in the video resume then people will start making uh, opinions on the on your attitude okay so so these are the things which will actually video resumes will help people to understand what kind of attitude a person has and if he is going to be culturally fit for the organization or no and uh, the last question now what are the don'ts in video resumes that the person should ignore <laughs> and not make those mistakes yeah it could be as silly as you know the background noise or maybe you know the background <laughs> of the <laughs> okay so i think uh, see one of the don'ts would be uh, do not use a, a a bad camera while shooting yeah. right your brightness and everything should be uh, better the video quality should be better okay second is um, like i mentioned earlier now that you shouldn't sound monotonous okay so there has to be uh, high pitch low pitch there has to be smile uh, you should talk about things you should uh, discuss about things rather than just saying it out okay so you shouldn't say it out you shouldn't read it out it should be a, a normal uh, normal uh, a, a talk kind of a thing a discussion kind of a thing yeah and then um uh, the don'ts i think uh, another would be the way uh, you dress so don't don't casually dress okay um you you should um, uh, be professionally dressed that that's what i would say and uh, yeah and uh, proper headphones proper mic so that uh, the audio is visible and then uh, you should review your videos every time so whenever you create a video if if you find that there is a small little uh, problem in the video if there's something uh, blank in between or something where uh, the audio is not captured please redo the video okay make sure that there are no glitches within the video so i think this is what i think uh, are uh, are the don'ts of video resumes <laughs> okay cool okay so uh, my friends have asked me why we are closing so early yusuf i think <laughs> <laughs> we, they have some more tips and questions um so please guys uh, feel free to let them come and we'll try to answer as many questions as we can uh, but uh, feel free uh, uh, i will be sharing uh, yusuf's linkedin uh, profile and my linkedin profile as well uh, so this is not the end even if the call ends we will still be there to help you guys um so okay uh, just one quick question that we have received is just one doubt oh it's a doubt not a question how many seconds could the self intro occupy in video resume very good question yeah so uh, see what you can so so it depends i mean uh, uh, see if you're making a 3 minutes video or a less than 3 minutes video now you should actually divide those uh, seconds in 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 uh, in different parts okay so let's say if you're doing a 3 minutes video so it's it's almost uh, like uh, 180 seconds so maybe you could keep 30 or 40 seconds for your interview but if you're doing a 120 second video okay then you should reduce the time of of your uh, self introductory but i think uh, uh, 30 seconds is is decent enough to talk about yourself okay yeah wonderful wonderful okay here are some of the interesting uh, uh, messages i have received uh, uh, prior to this i think you know uh, walking to this call uh, um, you know uh, a friend of ours just take, took a liberty to you know help us so that i i hope it helps everyone i'm just going to take a, a 30 seconds briefly uh, so uh, the flow of the video resume i think uh, that will help uh, our mm-hmm. audience and uh, uh, you know uh, participants to understand it yes. better so basically a flow could be you know uh, prepare your script first um, you know don't just read your resume uh, mm-hmm. you know there has to be a particular flow and you know like what yusuf mentioned very importantly you guys have to intonate you know it cannot be just 
uh, in one tone, plain tone, you know, which is very good uh, uh, um, suggestion. Uh, start with a small intro. Uh, uh, say that about your educational background. So, uh, you know, where you have come from, because people, recruiters, every recruiter will obviously look into your educational background. Uh, he, he, you know, so it, there's a structure in every recruiter's head, guys. I know it's and you know it, it, it in it's in a way they they shortlist your profile also education background location CTC uh, and key skill sets <laughs> you know and then of course you know it go on so you know uh, uh, and this is how their mind works to be honest <laughs> so uh, mention uh, if you guys have any internship experiences for freshers of course and then for experience uh, experienced candidates talk about your experience uh, you know I have five years of experience I have uh, I've done three internships and and uh, you know. Uh, so all this is we're just covering in the introduction, which Yusuf mentioned should be of thirty seconds. Okay. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so first you start with your educational background, then you talk about your uh, experience. It could be an internship, it could be uh, any of the experience or the job that you have done in the past, right? And then you follow this by your accomplishments, right? Like what have you achieved? Talk about your accomplishments because this is the main part of your resume. And this is exactly the sales pitch. Please be bear this in mind. If you're not uh, going to sell yourself, no one else will. All right. So this is your chance where you talk about your accomplishments. Uh, you can say that you have participated in four hackathons. And then, you know, this is your rank. And you know, this is your chance in the video resume to score, you know. Uh, and then, of course, you know, end the video uh, introduction with an impact. Like, you know, why should the person hire you? Which I think Joseph has already mentioned that, right? So I guess you know this should help you guys a bit. Uh, what I will also do is I'll ask my colleague to share uh, simple tips to all the participants and email them, uh, like you know how you can make your video resume as effective. I guess that will also help you guys. So all this will be covered and shared with you guys. Okay. Um, good. So we have got one more comment. Uh, okay, so uh, Sai has asked this question Yusuf, to us. What would you mention in our weakness section? It's a simple question, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, to be honest, Sai, um, I think you shouldn't put anything in the weakness exactly. section. Yeah, you shouldn't put anything in the weakness section. That that section should not be there in, in your uh, normal paper resume or your video resume. So yeah. please do not put that. Okay. Um, so uh, another comment, uh, suggestion, good broadness, technical structure, and nutshell, one round up as per last suggestion, please, in terms of the content flow as Alok tried. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just going to read this again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good uh, so, uh, would you, uh, I'm sorry, your name is not available. It's just saying B. Uh, so Miss B or Mr. B, if you can write your name, I will definitely, you know. Uh, so would you like us to, again, um, uh, summarize? Uh, is that what your suggestion is? Like, you know, what should be the basic introduction? That should it be comprising of? Is that what you uh, mean by this? Or or I'll just repeat it any which way. I guess this is what, uh, yes, OK. So, uh, okay, let's start with, uh, uh, so how the basic flow of video resume sh should be. Uh, start with a script, write it down on a piece of paper of what you need to uh, uh, mention. Or your, it's just like, you know, how actors, you know, read the script first and then they go for a shooting, right? Just think of it like that, okay? So uh, uh, idea was obviously not just to read your resume, but you have to actually, you know, prepare a script and then probably mention it on your video resume uh, or, or then record your video of course basic tips has already been covered by you so the camera quality the background everything should be uh, uh, you know uh, considered right uh, then uh, you give you start your video introduction by your educational background like where you come from which institute you have uh, 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 passed out from or what is the education that you have done right uh, apart from that, uh, then again, you know, mention your experience. It could be your project experience or it could be your actual relevant work experience that you have done. Uh, and then talk about your uh, two major important things, which is one is your accomplishments, right, that uh, you have achieved um, during your career. Uh, it could be start, uh, I mean, it could be your four pressures or experience, whoever. 
and the last thing is you need to end the video with an impact of why should a person hire you right so uh, and these things guys it will be shared with you don't worry i'll 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 uh, i'll ask uh, my colleague to share uh, an email with you where uh, the basic flow and everything will be covered okay okay Okay, um, so I guess uh, uh, it's time to uh, summarize the session, Yusuf. Yeah. Uh, and I think, uh, uh, I mean, I would first like to, you know, thank you for taking out time. Uh, and uh, thank you, you lovely participants. You have been very, very active and you have asked amazing questions. And, uh, but I mean, I think the credit cannot be taken away from Yusuf. Thank you so much for doing this for us, Yusuf. And uh, we will have you again, please, uh, very shortly. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll be happy to do this. And thank you for this opportunity. And uh, thank you for the audience. I mean, uh, again, I mean, if you guys have any questions, anything, any anything you would want to ask, you can get connected to me on uh, social media and I can help you out. So yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity. Okay, guys. So I will be anyway uh, sharing uh, uh, my LinkedIn request, uh, uh, so you guys can add me in the LinkedIn, and I'll uh, share Yusuf's as well if uh, he's okay. And uh, then uh, we guys can stay connected. And um, if you have any questions, you guys can just directly reach out to us. Yeah. All right. So uh, thank you so much.